Some time ago, Josiah Willard Gibbs in New Haven thought deeply about energy and what really constitutes the total energy of a process or a chemical reaction. And the answer he came up with might surprise you. He used the symbol G after himself, or delta G, meaning the change in the free energy. And he determined that when that value is negative, since it's the total usable energy of a process, you're going to have a spontaneous process. If that's a chemical reaction, it'll kick in. The overall formula he came up with is that the free energy of a system is a function of its enthalpy, which is its heat at constant pre pressure, subtracting out the entropy of the system multiplied by its Kelvin temperature. We haven't even defined entropy yet, but before we do, you can learn something about these signs, right? We said if it's negative, it's going to be a spontaneous process. Therefore, since these are the same value, a negative enthalpy, meaning an exothermic reaction, favors a spontaneous process. No surprise there. And Kelvin temperature is by definition positive. But because of this negative sign, we can already, before we define the term, determine that when the entropy is positive, that will also favor a spontaneous process. Entropy in a word is randomness. When things are getting more random, the entropy is increasing and it's positive. Let's do a couple examples. If we turn a liquid into a gas, it gets more random, positive. If we turn a liquid into a solid, it gets more organized, negative. One particle breaks into two, more random, positive. Entropy is really easy to analyze qualitatively like that. Let's do a plug-in type problem. Notice that we're given S, H, and T. Thank God we're not given an I. And let's find out what delta G is. They give you all the values, so let's write our formula. Plug in those three numbers. Notice that the entropy val enthalpy value is over a thousand times larger than the entropy value. That's typical, and we get a positive number. The fact that it's positive tells us that is sponta not spontaneous. It needs to be negative to be spontaneous. It was a yes or no question. The answer is no. We can continue our analysis of the signs of these things and come up with some pretty interesting results. As we determined here, if the reaction's giving off heat and getting more random, we don't even need to know the values. It's got to be spontaneous. Therefore, if it requires energy and gets more organized, it's never spontaneous. If it needs some energy to get the reaction cooking, but it increases in its randomness, its entropy, well, I'd say rarely because, you know, the enthalpy value here is very unfavorable and it's usually the dominant one. A higher temperature might be the only way you could overcome it to get it way more random. And the opposite here, well, now the enthalpy value is favorable and that will dominate. So I'm going to say usually, but in this case, as you heat things up, the system will work it against it in terms of entropy. So it would be best to have a low temperature for this system. But don't forget that this number is usually a small time player. Okay, that's a look at free energy.